here we are, empty board, and your opponent decides to play the 5-3. Now, there are two basic answers to the 5-3 point. The low approach or the high approach. Now you'll notice the first thing we're going to start with is the low approach. It's the most common. So the first thing to notice here is the low approach looks just like white played the 3-4 and black approached white. Right? If we take these stones away and we reverse the order of moves, white plays the 3-4, black plays the 5-3, it's the exact same. What's happened is the reversing of the order of the moves. Black played the 5-3 first, and then white approached on the 3-4 point. And what this means is that black basically approached white's 3-4 point, and then white ignored him and played somewhere else. It's the same situation. So, if you were black, where would you play next? All right, did you answer with the press? If you did, very good. Points to you. Even the AI thinks that this is the best move possible. Okay? And the Joseki from here is very simple. Right? White does not want to get sealed in like this. So, white will extend. And now, if black plays somewhere else, for example over here, white would just hane and he'd be out. And black's one stone here is looking really weak. So black, of course, extends again, keeping white pushed onto the side. And now white can keep extending, but this makes black very happy. Black is getting this nice wall on the outside. And so eventually white is going to have to try and get ahead. And if you were white, how would you do that? All right, well, there are actually two correct answers. The classic one is this jump here, this one space jump, and this would be the end of the joseki. Black can play somewhere else. Usually black would extend like this. Or, you know, black can, if he wants to leave this wall, he can go somewhere else. That's perfectly fine too. This is the end of the joseki. White's other response, and this is a more modern one that the AIs have thought up, is very similar to the 3-3 uh, the three invasion, the knight's move here. Both of these are acceptable. The knight's move is maybe a little lower, and so maybe not the best in this situation. Black can press him if he wants, but the beauty of this is that white can come up here. Black defends, and now there's a cutting point in black shape. And at this point, white can tanuki. White has two options. He can take the corner, or he can extend along the side. So going back a bit, from this position, Black can also tanuki, and this would be the end of the joseki. See? Very simple, very straightforward. Black presses, white extends, black extends, and then white makes a jump of some kind. So that's the most simple, most basic joseki for the 3-4. Now, the other option that white has, instead of this low approach, is what's called the high approach. And you can see that it's, it is, it's just higher than the last one, right? It's up on the fourth line. And so if you were black, how would you respond? Did you take the corner? If you did, wonderful, all the points to you. This, you'll notice, is the exact move that white could have made. They're interchangeable. If white blocks for the press, black gets the corner. If white goes for the corner, black gets the press. These two moves are interchangeable. If white plays here, black plays the press. If white stops the press, black gets the corner. So how do we continue this joseki? If you're white, what do you do? Did you block? If so, once again, points to you. This is the correct move here. Of course, black will descend so that white can't hane underneath and take away the corner. And then white plays lightly. He plays a three-point extension here. And you can see that white is kind of 
pushing black down into the corner. What's good about this for black is he can end here. He can play somewhere else. He can tanuki if he wants. Uh, black can also follow up with this move here, which looks to kind of push down on white. White doesn't quite have a good base yet because this stone is looking underneath. But the point is, is that white has played lightly and restricted black. Of course, if black does play somewhere else, white has a good follow-up in that he can press here and the AI likes this move. But it is giving black quite a bit of territory here. But white's wall is looking rather nice too. So it depends again on what kind of player you are. If you want to push black down into this corner and take a big wall, great. If you just want to restrict black and play quickly around the board, this is also an option for you. Although the AI thinks that coming underneath is better. And usually the thinking behind that, for the AI anyway, is that the corner is the most valuable territory on the board because it's the easiest place to make territory. So the AI thinks as much of that as you can get is probably a good idea. And so the AI and even the classic players during the Japanese period recommended this move if you're going to approach the corner because even though it gives black this nice press, white isn't just giving the corner to black. Even in the past, this high move was only recommended if you had a reason to play high. For example, if black has a good setup over here, something like this, right? If black has a nice setup like this, then maybe you don't want to play under like that because this press looks really good for black. He's getting a nice wall here that really looks good with the rest of his stones, right? So if black has something like this going on, maybe playing the low approach like this is not the best idea for white. If black has this setup, then the idea would be to play the high approach to limit black's moyo potential over here. Those are the two basic approaches to the 5-3 uh, point. You can, once again, play the low approach, or the high approach. It's not that hard, and it's not that scary yet. The next Joseki we get into is the one that terrifies people. The Great Slope.